This tutorial reviews the Equipment Evaluation module in the SKM PowerTools software program. Equipment Evaluation automatically compares equipment ratings in the Power System model with the normal and abnormal operating conditions expected. Equipment Evaluation is used to protect electrical system components and to prevent human injury by confirming that protective devices are properly sized and have sufficient interrupting ratings to safely isolate electrical problems. Equipment evaluation also helps maintain service continuity by assuring adequate equipment withstand and continuous current ratings. To evaluate equipment in the power system, the maximum steady state load currents, maximum three phase and single line to ground short circuit currents, and the maximum short circuit X over R are required. You must also know the age of the equipment or the standard that was in effect when the equipment ratings were established the equipment short circuit withstand and interrupting ratings, and the equipment continuous current ratings. The equipment test X over R comes from the testing standards and varies with the type of equipment. The methodology used in equipment evaluation in its simplest form compares the ratings of the equipment to the estimated worst case operating conditions expected in the power system. It compares continuous current and voltage ratings to the system design loads and calculated load flow current and voltage. It compares short circuit withstand and interrupting ratings to calculated short circuit current. Equipment is derated if the calculated short circuit X over R exceeds the test X over R for the equipment. Similar adjustments are made to the equipment ratings for older medium and high voltage equipment when the application voltage doesn't match the equipment voltage rating. Since single line to ground fault currents may exceed three-phase fault currents, both values are used in the evaluation. Pass, fail, and marginal criteria may be set for each category of evaluation. For example, you may choose to list equipment as marginal if the calculated short circuit value is within 10% of the equipment rating. This would help you in new designs to add larger safety margins for future growth at minimal cost. You can choose whether to evaluate short circuit current ratings, continuous current ratings, or both. You can also choose to evaluate individual load schedule circuits. The equipment evaluation display lists each piece of equipment, whether it passes, marginally passes, or fails any of the evaluation criteria. It lists each criteria including voltage, continuous current, short circuit interrupting, and short circuit withstand. The rating percentage for each category is also listed to help you quickly evaluate the status of each individual criteria. Equipment evaluation can use the results from the PTW balance system studies or from the unbalanced studies. You can view the evaluation of protective devices, equipment buses, or non-protective devices such as cables and transformers. You can further refine the list of components by device type, or by selected query. For example, the query can be used to display only those components that fail the evaluation criteria. Equipment evaluation can use the maximum fault values at each equipment bus or the maximum current that flows through each branch. You can also use fault results from A fault, the DAPR comprehensive fault, or the IEC fault analysis module. All of the studies can be run or rerun directly from the equipment evaluation display. The equipment evaluation results can be printed in tabular form or saved in a spreadsheet format. The equipment evaluation report for protective devices uses a multi-line format for efficiency and easy comparison of ratings and calculated values. The equipment evaluation results can also be displayed directly on the one line. Equipment that doesn't pass all of the evaluation criteria is highlighted in red or a user-defined highlight color. Equipment evaluation checks molded case circuit breakers, insulated case circuit breakers, power circuit breakers, fuses, and medium and high voltage circuit breakers. Equipment evaluation checks continuous current ratings and short circuit ratings for panels and motor control centers, continuous current and voltage ratings for switches, capacitors, and filters, and continuous current ratings and voltage drop limits for cables, transformers, and reactors. 
To better understand the concepts behind equipment ratings and proper selection, it's important to know that fault clearing times are different for each type of protective device. For example, current limiting fuses and breakers operate in less than one half cycle for high currents in the current limiting range. Expulsion fuses and molded case breakers operate in about one cycle. Low voltage power circuit breakers operate in two cycles. And medium and high voltage breakers operate in three to eight cycles. Different operating times mean that the protected devices are subjected to fault current and resulting mechanical stresses for differing amounts of time. The rate of decay of the fault current also affects the amount of current the protected device needs to interrupt. The X over R affects the rate of decay. Since the protected devices are tested at a typical X over R, the published ratings must be derated for applications at higher X over R. Molded case and insulated case circuit breakers are tested at an X over R of 1.75 to 6.59 depending on the size of the breaker. Low voltage power circuit breaker ratings are published at an X over R of 6.6. .6. For applications where the X over R is higher than 6.6, .6, the breaker rating must be derated. For example, if your system X over R is 20, the published rating must be divided by 1.14 for a fused circuit breaker and 1.26 for an unfused circuit breaker. We'll now follow a short demonstration of how the equipment evaluation module is used. Equipment evaluation is performed near the end of the power system design process or with a set of preliminary power system studies. After you sketch a one line for the power system model, After you've entered the system voltages, after you've entered the utility source, transformer information, cable information, motor and load information, select protective device reference information from the library, and after you've run the short circuit and load flow studies. Once the power system model is built and preliminary studies are run, to run the equipment evaluation you simply click on the run equipment evaluation button. Alternatively, you can click on the checkbox icon, which is a shortcut to equipment evaluation. Let's take a minute to review the equipment evaluation interface. The default options for equipment evaluation are to use the balanced system study results, to display protective devices, to list all the protective devices, to use the maximum fault at each bus, and to use the ANSI fault study results. The default equipment evaluation options are set to fail any device that exceeds 100% of the voltage rating, interrupting short circuit duty, withstand momentary close and latch duty, load flow current, or design current. Additionally, any generator whose output exceeds its rating, buses where the voltage drop exceeds 5%, branches where the voltage drop exceeds 3%, and transformers, generators, motors, and loads where the operating voltage is outside a 10% margin from rated voltage will show as failed. Devices will be reported as marginal if the calculated values exceed the specified percent of rating shown in the marginal column. For example, protective devices will be listed as marginal if the calculated interrupting short circuit value exceeds 90% of the rating, and it will be listed as failed at 100% of the rating. 
all of the marginal and fail criteria are user-defined. Back to our example, the equipment evaluation display indicates that both of our protective devices failed some aspect of the evaluation. Upon closer examination, we see that the ABB ADVAC breaker voltage is OK. Application voltage is 4160, and the maximum voltage is 4760. The 1200 amp continuous current rating is more than adequate for the 16 amp load current. But scrolling to the right, we see that the interrupting current is 125% of the interrupting rating and the close and latch current is also 125% of the rating. Note that the criteria that failed the evaluation is highlighted with an asterisk to help you quickly identify the problem areas. The device interrupting rating is also marked with N2, indicating that the rating was adjusted to the application voltage. Notes at the bottom of the equipment evaluation display help you identify adjustments made to the ratings or calculated short circuit currents and helps identify the failed criteria. To correct the failure for PD0001, we either need to reduce the fault current or select a breaker with a larger rating. We can use the right mouse button and the go to component editor shortcut to edit the components. We currently have the breaker model 5ADV36 selected, which has a maximum rating of 36KA at minimum voltage. If we choose model 5ADV49 with a maximum rating of 49KA, it should be adequate to pass the evaluation. We simply click on the Save icon and the equipment evaluation results are updated automatically. Breaker PD0001 now passes the evaluation for voltage, continuous current, and short circuit current. We next move to PD0002. We already established that this breaker failed because of the continuous current rating. We again use the Go To Component Editor option to edit the device. We see that the breaker has a 63 amp plug which corresponds to the 63 amp continuous current rating shown in the equipment evaluation table. We therefore need to select a frame, sensor, and plug that are rated for at least 142 amps. After we change the plug size, we click on the Save icon to update the equipment evaluation display. As you can see, both protective devices now pass the evaluation of voltage, continuous current, and short circuit current. Since the protective devices pass, we next move on to buses. No buses show in our list because we didn't assign any equipment to any of our buses. Selecting a bus in the component editor, we can choose the equipment and arc flash subview. The bus doesn't have a rating, so there's nothing to evaluate. For buses in your power system model that represent actual equipment, you can assign ratings or select from a library. For example, the bus may represent a low voltage MCC. Make sure you select the appropriate rating. Once the bus has ratings assigned, it will appear in the equipment evaluation list. The low voltage MCC bus passes the evaluation for voltage, continuous current, and short circuit current. The last category of devices are non-protective devices such as cables and transformers. For our example, the cable, transformer, and motor components pass the voltage, current, and voltage drop criteria. All show pass in the status column. 
Now that you understand the fundamentals of how the Equipment Evaluation Module works, let's look at a few more interface features. Columns in the Equipment Evaluation Display can be resized. You can sort the components by clicking on the heading for any column. The default display sorts the list of components by component type. For a large project, it is useful to jump from one component type to another using the jump to icons. For example, I click on the motor icon to jump to the first motor in the list. User-defined queries may be used to reduce the list. For example, I can use the query icon to choose to display only cables. The list icon will return the list to display all of the components. I can also make a user-defined query to display only components that failed the equipment evaluation. I click on the new icon. I select components. Device evaluation status equal failed. I give my query a name. And I click on OK. Since none of my components failed, nothing shows up in the list. To generate a report in Equipment Evaluation, you simply click on the Report button. You can report all devices in the list or report selected devices only. You can also choose to report only those devices that failed the evaluation. You can print the report by clicking on the Print button or save the report in Excel format. You can use the Options button to set margins or change the size and style of the font using the Font button. There's a separate report for protected devices, buses, and non-protected devices. If you've made recent changes to your power system model and you're not sure that you've rerun all of the studies, you can use the Run Study button to rerun all the studies without leaving Equipment Evaluation. There's also an Input Evaluation button, which produces a report that lists components with missing input information. In addition to the standard Equipment Evaluation report, you can use the Document, Crystal Report, to choose from a variety of pre-formatted reports. You can also use the Run Data Block Format option to display equipment evaluation information directly on the one line. The Run Failed Equipment Evaluation option will highlight any devices that fail in a highlight color. The Reset Color icon will remove the highlight color. For devices that have a combined series rating, you can enter the series rating in the component editor. The series rating will be used instead of the individual device rating. Equipment evaluation saves a tremendous amount of time by performing the rating checks for the entire power system model and by generating complete and concise reports. This completes the equipment evaluation tutorial. For additional information, Visit our website at www.skm.com, send an email to sales at skm.com, or call us toll-free at 1-800-232-6789.